Nicole from Crayons, Pencils, and Students Oh My, and today I'm here to do the I Teach Two tag. I'm really excited. I know this has been around for a while, a few weeks now, but this is the first time that I've had a chance to be able to sit down and do this video, but I'm really excited to share some of this stuff because the questions on this I feel like are fun to watch, and I've been watching a ton of different YouTube teachers do this tag, so I'm excited to share mine. So the first question is, what do you teach and where? Currently, I am teaching pre-K in a public school in upstate New York. Um, and I say upstate. It is upstate New York, but it is like an urban school district. So think like kind of like New York City-ish. How long have you been teaching? I have been teaching for, well, this is going to be my third year teaching. I am so excited and... I like cannot wait for this year. This is the first year that I'm teaching the same grade level, like going in to teach the same grade level. So I'm really excited. I actually feel like somewhat organized this year and I'm ready to start this school year. The third question is, did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? And yes, I was that child that always made everybody play school and was constantly like trying to be like the teacher. And I love school. Like I loved going to school. I enjoyed like every bit of it um so yeah I always did kind of know that I wanted to be a teacher and in all honesty if somebody told me like okay tomorrow you wake up you can't be a teacher anymore what are you gonna do I don't really know what I would do like that's how long I wanted to be a teacher like I never had a backup plan like that's just always what I wanted to be question four is what is your typical hashtag teacher OOTD? I don't know if I I have a typical one. Well, Friday is our dress down day. So we get to wear jeans and our school t-shirt. So that's my Friday OOTD every week. But I would say in the warmer months, typically I'm wearing just like a cotton dress and sandals. Um, and in the winter, I like to wear like um, ankle pants or... Um, leggings with like sweater dresses and layered stuff um I do like Lula Row. I'm a little a little bit maybe obsessed with it I don't have as much stuff as some of the teachers that I work with but I am a fan of wearing their clothes to work because a if you layer them they can be appropriate but you definitely have to add some extra pieces to them to make them look professional but they are so comfortable. It's like wearing pajamas to work. So definitely like a LuLaRoe person when it comes to clothes for work. But also most of my clothes come from J. Crew, Ann Taylor Loft or Target, mainly just because I get a discount at all those places. I have a red card at Target, so I get 5% off there and J. Crew and Ann Taylor Loft both have a teacher discount. Um, number five is what do you usually bring for lunch? I do bring frozen meals sometimes. I bring those Amy's like organic frozen meals. That's if I run out of time. Otherwise, I bring like leftovers. So when I make dinner the night before, I'll make enough so that I'll have an extra meal for lunch and I'll bring that and heat it up. Sometimes I'll bring like a bagged salad. Mm, I'm trying to think what else I bring. I usually bring like a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables to snack on. And sometimes I'll leave like a box of crackers in my room in case I get like hungry and have the munchies during the day but in all honesty like this is gonna sound really bad but for the first two weeks of school I honestly don't really have time to eat um but then like as the school year goes on then I sit with my class and eat lunch with them which is actually really fun like I get to eat lunch with a bunch of four and five year olds every day and the conversation is always interesting so that's a plus Number six, what is one of your favorite books about teaching? Oh, I wonder if I have it. No, that one's not it. I do like this one, but the one that I really like, I don't know where I put it. This one's called Confessions of a um, Bad Teacher. This one was really good. The one that I really like, like my all-time favorite book that I've read about teaching, well, I have two. There's one that's all about literacy, but that one's not really like along the same lines as this it's called teach like your hair is on fire and the person who wrote it it's kind of written like a memoir and I was obsessed with that book I can link those two books 
my two, the literacy one and the teach like your hair is on fire one down below in the description box because you should read them both. They are amazing. Especially if you teach in an urban school or like a title one school, you should read them. Um, what is one of your favorite teacher movies? I don't know. I didn't think about these before this. Hmm. Let me think. Teacher movies? I don't know. I guess Good Will Hunting. Like, I, I think that that movie is really inspirational. I think it's really sweet. Um, I also, like, this isn't a teacher movie, but since I teach pre-K and my certifications in birth through grade, well, through grade six, but my initial certification is only in early childhood, I really like the documentary Babies. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that, but it's so cute, and it shows how people all around the world raise babies, and it's like up until, I want to say it was like up until the age of two, they followed these families around. That, I really like that movie. So I guess that one's my favorite teacher movie, even though it's not, it's all about development though, so I guess that counts. Who was your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher was Mrs. Handy. She was my first grade teacher, and her husband was actually our PE teacher in elementary school, Mr. Handy, and I loved them. I loved her, I loved him, I loved, like, honestly, like, I don't even know. I absolutely loved her. And actually, my senior year in high school, I had the opportunity to go back to the elementary school that I attended and do an internship with her because I took this class in high school and it was like an internship program. And since I knew that I wanted to be a teacher, they gave us a chance to like kind of test out like if we actually wanted to do it that way. When we got to college, we knew that that was the um, major that we would do. And I got to do an internship with her during her last year of teaching and it was so amazing like I loved it um and actually at the end of that internship she gave me like a lot of her stuff so and I use it in my classroom today and it's really nice to be able to remember her and I just loved her so much she was so much fun she did all kinds of like crafts with us and like she was crazy about having good handwriting which I appreciate now and she was just, I feel like I learned so much from her and she was just so loving and oh, I loved her. Number nine. Oh, that was number nine. Oh no, sorry. Number nine. Who are some of your favorite teacher YouTubers, Instagrammers, Snapchatters, etc.? So I'm going to go through my list. I have four different YouTubers slash TPT people, whatever. Pocket full of primary. I love her. I watch her all the time. I get excited when her videos come up on my like feed of suggested videos because she just posts them. I love her. And I feel like I'm very similar to her. Like I like to have things all done like perfectly and I need them all done and I want my classroom. To look. Like I feel like we're very similar and I feel like if we met in person we would be really good friends. The second one, the lettered classroom also love her I really enjoyed watching her video this year of her switching grade levels and seeing like how she dealt with it and how she went through like the change from kindergarten to what is she, third or fourth grade now and like I give her props for doing that because it must have been really difficult and I've had to switch grade levels during the middle of the school year and it is not fun and it's difficult and I just like she really motivated me and like inspired me this year with all of her stuff going on with her move and job change. The next one is one of my newer like YouTubers that I like to watch and that's that one happy classroom. She's great. I love her. She's so happy all the time and she has like the best ideas. Um, I'm excited to see her go through her like first year in her own classroom too and see what she has to share. So I like her a lot. And my last one is Aaron's Hobbies Presents. Now he does some stuff that's like he does teacher vlogs and then he does stuff that's not teacher stuff. And I really like both of them. He's just like an interesting person to watch and he has really good ideas. And I actually, I'll insert a picture here. He did these like memory boxes and I took that idea and I actually made my own this year and the parents went crazy over them. So I definitely get a lot of my ideas from YouTubers and I appreciate all the teacher YouTubers out there and I watch a lot of them. But those are my top four favorites. 
Um, number 10, what is one of your best classroom management tips? So for classroom management, it is so important that you set strict guidelines at the beginning of the year and expectations. If the kids don't know what your expectations are, they're not going to be able to adhere to a classroom management plan. Um, I start the year spending a lot of time on routines. Number one, if the kids are in a routine and they have structure, that everything will fall into place. And your students might fight you for a little bit on that structure, but eventually they're going to strive on that. Like they're going to need the structure and they're going to love it. Um, also, I like to only have one rule and my one and only rule in my class is be respectful. And that usually covers just about everything if there's an issue. If there's an issue and I ask them, are you being respectful? The answer is usually no. So that is also another tip. Have only one rule and set clear and firm expectations. And discuss things. Um, I'm a fan of using morning meeting or circle time to have discussions about issues in the classroom. And I did this even when I was teaching fourth grade. We would sit down, we would talk about some of the problems that we were having, and we would talk it out and discuss it. And if that took up academic time, then it took up academic time. But me taking 15 or 20 minutes to discuss it one day saved me hours if you added it up over the time that it would have taken up if I hadn't taken that time out of my day to discuss it. And when I taught fourth grade, I would do that. And I was testing and I had state tests, but I still took the time to have a class meeting if there was a major issue. And I think that it makes all the difference. Number 11, what is one reason you decided to become a teacher? I just really like helping people and I really like working with kids. And I feel like as a teacher, you get to do both of those things and you have such a big impact on people's lives. And that's really like the main reason that I decided to become a teacher. And I honestly, I could not be happier. Like I love my job. I love the families that I work with and I look forward to going to it every day. And I know that not everybody gets to say that, but thankfully I do. And I'm so excited for the next school year. Like I can't even tell you. So I hope you enjoyed my I Teach 2 tag. I thought this was really fun to be able to share some of this with you. If you have any questions about any of the things that I talked about or want any more information on any of these questions, please leave a comment down below. If you have teacher friends that watch YouTube videos, please share this with them. Like and subscribe this video so that you get the newest videos on your newsfeed. See you soon. Bye.